Hey, uh, good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for Friday, December 9th, 2022. Uh, I uploaded the coaching session from last night's uh, podcast and a quick look at the Tharp Trader profile uh, onto Patreon for members to take a quick look at to complete the task from late last night. Uh, this is just a quick look. Uh, you may want to screenshot this one, the zero state visualization. This is an exercise from the foundations course that we use to understand visually what we mean by the zero state and why there are a lot of different answers to what is the best zero state for you to trade in. Um, and going through the exercise helps us recognize the tension between competing time scales like past, present, and future. And then the tensions between various emotional states of joy, uh, mindfulness, and despair, uh, and equanimity or balance. And why different memories of our past and visualizations of the future can generate emotional waves that become part of who we are as traders and what we can do about it, what we can know about it, and how we can respond to the ways that we perform based on where we are on that grid. So for me, my best zero state is one in which I am really centered at that yellow dot where I am well into the present between the boundaries of 10 and 12 in terms of time frame, and that I have a slightly positive, favorable, optimistic attitude, so slightly above the zero line on the emotional scale, but that I am uh, very much centered on the current moment and having a quiet readiness about me. Uh, not This is not the absence of emotions, but it is a cultivated emotion of readiness and recognition that I am ready and confidence that I know what I'm doing uh, and that I need that in order to handle these outside influences which are like distractions in the crowd when you're trying to shoot foul shots in the championship game where moments from the past that are re either extremely pleasurable or very painful or visualizations of the future in which I'm counting my greedy dollars before I have them or the fear of losing all my money, that I've got to contend with those competing voices and narratives and really not, not let them inside this zero state, this circle of competence where I am cultivating a professional stance. And for me, anywhere in that little battle circle is effective, but my ideal state is in that up into the right quadrant where I am leaning forward with a bias for action but under control and also with a positive expectation about what's going to happen. So the exercise in the foundations course takes you a lot deeper into that and it's be, is one of the most important self understandings that we do in that course to help you with your ideal state and how you perform in these different areas and, and it's going to vary by person in the same way that our emotional and cognitive states vary by person. All right, so let's start today. Uh, let's get into the into the session and we'll begin as always with the sniper trade of the day. And uh, today we're looking at, um, at U.S. Steel as usual. Let me get my get my pen working here. Sorry. One moment. Just a moment. There we go. All right, so uh, this was yesterday's close, and it gapped down and opened here. Uh, and then that three-minute bar took it all the way up to close here. It opened here, sold off momentarily, and then continued to go at which point we put the buy order in because it had break, broken out above the OR3. That's our OR3 right there. So off we go with a standard risk box of the R10. 
one tenth of a range stat. Check or hold. Uh, this moves out nicely um, for the next, you know, the rest of that bar, the next bar, then the third bar after has a lower high and begins to close, and now I'm feeling okay. Oh, and then it takes out the two bar low, so that becomes a one, two, three exit. And if this is one unit of risk, that's about one unit of reward plus a little spillage. And that's a nice way to just get one in the bank, get started, and warmed up. It retreats directly all the way down to the PSAR and challenges it with price once and then twice and now we get the R10 has come across the baby dragon and all the way through the dragon and leaves the dragon and so we take the short side position and what I'm looking for is this key price level here that if it takes out the belly of yesterday's RL10 near the close uh, or if I if it's gonna take out the mathematical low of the day uh, then somewhere in this region uh, I'm going to have a confirmation of a genuinely large move, and those would we would call those collapsing dragons. And so that leaves this space between my entry and that space as the tactical space in our mind. And all we're trying to do in the tactical space is get our risk out of the market. So if I can get it past my my entry which is right there, then uh, as soon as I can do that, I can lock in a no-lose plus dinner for two wedge, which takes my risk out and really affects my psychology in a positive way. And it doesn't really get all the way down there, does it? It just kind of meanders, um, never really gets down below that low, doesn't get down to this region or this region. And the R10 is just kind of drifting downward, and it times out, essentially. We have the PSAR sort of makes it, hey, what are you going to do, fish or cut bait? So we cut bait, and uh, we make a little bit, maybe a half an hour on that little piece. If that's one unit of risk, that's about a 0.5 of reward. Now, I'm still interested that if it does violate below here, um, I, or it gets down into this region, I'm certainly willing to be short. Uh, but failure to fail is information. And so um, I take the low of the day, uh, a couple higher lows, and I'm going to treat that as a stop and reverse uh, and call that one an SSC, supported spring crossing, because prices move from a measured high, significant low, and then piece or flip. Uh, dragon leaves the river. And up we go. Kind of grinds into a another half an hour. So now this is feeling like a grinding day, and I'm getting paid by picking up these little fragments. So 0.5 here and a 0.5 there, that's another 1 plus this one. So now I'm at about plus 2 for the day. Now this one rolls over at a lower high compared to the previous peak. So this feels like a cot of 2 to the downside. I could wait for it to take out this low here, but because I already have the lower high, I can take it inside the pocket as the R, as the R10 comes through the dragon. I'm willing to take that, and my standard risk box takes me right to the top of that R10 peak anyway, so that feels natural. I'd like to see it get below this price level here. That would be good. So again, this is the tactical space. All I'm trying to do is get my risk out 
and get the trade in the money so that I can collect a nice little wedge, no lose plus dinner for two. That's all I'm trying to do in this tactical space. It's not until it breaks down below here that I really have something going on. Check or hold. Bingo. Right on time. So at this point, uh, we've got about one R in hand, but I like this structure that with the lower highs, <coughs> and this entire space through here, it was, it was supposed to go, but it didn't. So that's failure to follow through, and now this feels with the lower high, that, and then the break right here, this feels like it's all failing. So I'm willing to go almost at uh, like a one R battle drill, if you can, I don't want to call it that, but uh, with one R and momentum in hand and all of this here in a bear quiet market uh, and two R in hand. I mean, I've got two R from this trade and this one is already one in hand. So I'm plus three for the day. So in one sense, you could take one of those and roll it into that and use markets money if you want to be if you want to reduce your anxiety about money that's a way to do it and then by this time in the trade uh, you know I wanted I would I would like to have on that move it locked in and now that I've got this piece in as soon as I can I'd like to get this one in the money now the first trade is clearly in the money and I will have gotten a wedge, the no lose plus dinner for two on the second position. So that feels pretty good. Now this one is instructive. It has a little shelf that formed of support right in here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bars times three minutes. So for 25, 24 minutes, it could not fail. Now, it didn't get any higher, so that feels like a consolidation area, and then it breaks. And both of these trades are in the money. So like the first position is one, two, plus three, and the second position from here is plus two. So I'm plus five. And then also plus two from the first series. So I'm at about plus seven now. So that one feels like I can use one of markets money and roll it in. And then that thing fails right away. So as you might imagine, I can take my stop on this one, get this locked in. And now my third position. Is it no lose plus dinner for two? And I'm happier than a dead pig in the sun. Standard exit. So that one's about probably seven R. Um, I get a supported spring crossing here uh, all I'm doing is taking one of the seven or eight R that we have so far I'm taking that markets money so if I'm like at plus eight I can take four and put that in the bank and use that to fund that's tomorrow's four that's tomorrow's risk capital earned today. So I've actually, if I have something like my own core capital, and today we were so good, I can take those earnings and put that in a little holding account conceptually for tomorrow, you know, uh, D plus one, so that's tomorrow. Now, tomorrow's four bullets of risk, I can take out of 
call that the weekly gains or today's daily gains, whatever, I have, whatever excess I have from this week. And then I don't even have to touch my true core. I can be looking just at weekly markets money and be more relaxed with those four because I remember where it came from. This I don't have an emotional contact with that stuff yet until I get through the end of the week. So that's a way that you might rationalize and compartmentalize the way you approach money management. So we're into an SSC pattern here. Quick scratch, stop and reverse to the short side, because why not? That's been the theme of the day. That brings in a quick 1 to 2 R. And that's enough for the day. So that's about 10. Uh, let's take a look at the traders today before we get into the review of the weekend. If we can, we'll do that. Not, not tight. Well, let's, let's look at, yeah, let's do it that way. It is Friday. So. See how the traders fared today. Here's Agnieszka. Uh, she tries an SSC on the Aussie dollar five. Quick, uh, quick loss. It reverses. It gives her a, now it's a cot of two and the PSR flipped. And she brings home 1.9. So she doesn't stay wrong too long because you don't know that it's just going to stop right there like it did. If this were to have broken below this, look out below. So you want to take the orderly exit when you can, in my view. Um, I'd have been very tempted by this, and I would like to have been able to get out here. And then after this period of enormous volatility, the PSR flip, new trading day, new session, gets her wrist box on, gets paid, quick scratch, 1.6 for the day, very nicely done, very artful. This looks like Kyun on uh, Tesla. Maybe I don't, no, no, I'm sorry, Satya, sorry, read my own chart here. Uh, gets a quick 2R on the OR3 breakout. Couple quick scratches, re-enters. I'd have been so tempted here. I don't think you'd have lost money. Um, I like the short. I think um, on the immediate reversal, I think I want you out here instead of absorbing all of this and then taking that. Another quick scratch, quick loss. He keeps firing, gets paid. That one pays for that one. A couple quick scratches. There was a cot of two, but you were probably uh, resetting. Uh, and then another quick short. But 1.4. Uh, I like that. I thought that was pretty good work today. Um, basically, some scratching in MDB. Wasn't much of a mover today, not much to see there. Although I do have to say, um, if we're going to, come on, Ken. Uh, this one, I think, when this does not work right away, I think you got to get out when it crosses the dragon. That makes this loss a little less, this loss a little less. But I like that you keep firing. But, you know, if this is 1.7, there was another one. 1.7, 1.7, .7, and 1.7. So uh, MDB may have more than you're expecting uh, and keep going. But I do uh, notice that you were looking. So there was a span of control for you there. Um, Constantine continues to, uh, to grind it out in a professional way with his um, 
gold US dollar work. That stupid pen's not being very responsive for me, pardon me. That's a little better. All right, so he's got this long sideways Z3 pinch, breaks down below, gets paid, gets a stop and reverse right here. Now, where I want you to start noticing is this price right here. At the top of that shelf, uh, this is where it was supposed to grind or even fail, but it didn't. And so we got to be ready for that. You get a second position, and then instead of seven, you got ten. And then another PSR flip. What an orderly trade XAU the dollar is. Boy, I, I can't imagine why more of us are not doing that. All right, you saw my trades in uh, U.S. Steel. Here's uh, Nolan looking at some work here. There's his nice big breakout to the upside. Um, I like the short here. This is still pretty good. Uh, I like that one. I like the quick exit and then the, a couple caught of twos. If you keep firing, there's more available. But still 1.5, that's pretty good. Uh, here's Tesla. Now, uh, he was. this was a span of control uh, issue here. I wonder if it's the pen that's not, is malfunctioning. All right, so he was working on um, U.S. Steel, and so wasn't there for this piece. Um, that's a that's a nice one, two, three, caught a two, quick cut. I like the reentry, or no, I'm sorry, this was short, and then a quick cut. That's a pretty good reentry, which pays for most. Of, I don't know that those are mistakes. I I'm not persuaded those are mistakes. Uh, we, could we have maybe trimmed it a little bit? Yeah, maybe. But I think uh, I think you, especially in Tesla, you got to be ready for that to go. And I think in either direction, and you did. It's just that's the price of doing business. Uh, caught a two over there as well. I think you're harsher on yourself than you need to be on that one. To be honest. Um. Yeah, this is an important one. This is an urgency to trade. Um, yeah, we don't not, not sure what that. Maybe that's a caught a two, but this first one that short is if you were if you were really searching and we look back far enough, we would probably see this as a uh, collapsing dragon. We'd probably see a collapsing dragon here, but that's out quick. Um, I like to see the longs after that reversal, and uh, what this looks like is the end of the trading day. I, I, oh no, I'm sorry, there I, I couldn't see those prices; they were behind the. But yeah, so I like I like that one. That's pretty good. It was kind of a grinding day. Uh, your other trade was had a better mover to be honest. Um, Nike, he's looking at a OR3. Boy, this is just giving me grief here. Uh, that was the, he was marking off the OR3 move. There's a collapsing or a VWAP collapse right there. Uh, and then a good long trade for one. Uh, 
I like that. That's opportunity trading and uh, well managed. He was, you know, the advantage of trading out in this area is you get you get through all those morning shenanigans. And this is more like the professionals getting set up for the rest of their day. Um, take a quick look here for Tim. Uh, I like the long effort because you had this first surge, a pullback, and it's starting to go. Um, maybe a slight improvement. That's still about as good as you're going to get. Um, I like this short. I'd like to see the reentry maybe a little better. Um, we shouldn't lose money on that trade. This is nice. And this one, uh, I like getting paid, but then we got to be ready for this. But then we shifted attention to Devon, so that's not that's not an unwillingness to trade. That was just a span of control issue. That's fine. Um, Devon, uh, pretty good work here. Uh, I think you got what was available. I might have uh, I might have wanted to look at this at this move down here at the one two three here instead of getting this. That would make a slight improvement, but still pretty good for the day. And, uh, yeah, I think we already saw that one from uh, Constantine. So good work from the traders. Quick look at the reports. Oops. All right, so we remain in um, uh, bearish quiet. You see the weakness of the last couple of days reflected in the short term. The ETF2 reduced risk a little bit because we were hoping to see more follow through today. The risk Z is starting to show some weakness to the downside, so we're mindful of that. That goes hand in hand with a slight uh, reduction in scope there. You can see a significant rollover in the uh, RLFF uh, daily as it has come back through the dragon. The dragon is rolling over. This means protect profits, be careful, be mindful that we are in uh, 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 bearish quiet conditions. You see that on the 150 and on the 30 minute chart as well. Uh, blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. The internationals are really doing pretty well. You look at, uh, you got the EAFE index, conservative diamonds, but then Japan, Asia, less Japan, Australia, uh, leading the way over the U.S. Um, real estate continues to get smoked. You're seeing that everywhere um, about uh, collapses in the housing markets in every part of that supply chain now. So there's some, there's some issues there in, in housing that are, structural in nature and there's gonna you know the easy money from flipping may be over right um especially on those high price markets out west etf 22 like i don't think i'd be owning a lot of property in california right now and going forward um when we add the xl series in uh the 22 ETF portfolio, you can see healthcare and industrials and staples moving to the top. So those are the defensive plays. ETF 32, silver, um, and gold back in the top 10 again. Clean energy just getting smashed. That's a That's been a reliable short. I should do more on that one. Uh, in the Dow, uh, Merck, Boeing, Caterpillar, just getting it done. And uh, even my favorite here, Honeywell, had a tough week along with the rest of tech. But uh, uh, the healthcare and defense are looking pretty strong. Uh, shift to the liquidity report. Um, the best traders are the ones that have the highest daily dollar 
highest daily dollar volume. God damn. And, uh, and are also very liquid, so that's going to give you uh, energy. Um, China, Brazil, and semiconductors, gold miners, and biotech. Uh, we'll shift to the daily report for Monday now. And we've seen a little bit of a warning in the U.S. beginning to manifest in the uh, mid caps as potential uh, overbought conditions now. So that's a warning. And again, in the, the min panes, these are all the staples and defensive plays. Procter, McDonald's, Pfizer, and Coke, joined only by IBM from Techland. But real weakness in the metals, Tesla, and, and energy continuing to suffer. Uh, finance rolling over, Goldman rolling over. And uh, the daily tactical for the Dow. Breakdown here, Chevron and a little more weakness in energy, Alcoa with a breakdown, um, 5DD here in DuPont and in Walmart, which was also a percent loser. Starting to see some weakness creeping into Walmart. That's not a good sign, even for the defensive plays when your stalwart is suffering. Um, Auto Framer showing a reasonable number, uh, Goldman Sachs. Should be of interest, J.P. Morgan. So we're, we'll see if that is reflected in uh, sector weakness in finance. Um, yeah, the, it is. So when I look at finance, I want to take a quick look at XLF. Uh, it's 4.2 to 1 on the auto framer. Uh, it was a doji and is in a channeling and an overreaction. Um, and as a 551W, that's a kind of an ideal spot. If we see any kind of strength next week and finance is better than the market, that's a, that's a clear winner. And then these ones that are compressed on the 10-day uh, have, have created themselves a little value proposition uh, to be mindful of. Uh, nice move continuing in silver. It's a defensive play that's not crypto. Standard numbers for your auto framers and squeezes for those of you framing at home. Uh, in our snipers, uh, still a handful of Godzilla's. NRG is another good mover. Uh, we saw that one over the last two days, still there. Um, a handful of the S&P most volatiles on both five day and one day. I'd be looking at ATV, IVNO, and Halliburton in the energy space, along with NRG and, and Schlumberger. That's the energy sector getting ready to pop. Standard stats. Um, the volatile ones in our symbol set here for the tactical symbols, marijuana, oil, Devon energy, and oil exploration. So it's the energy sector that's at a, in a critical state ready to pop. Um, and the rest of it is standard stuff. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night. Going to get upstairs and help my brother finish working on our home remodeling. He's just doing some great work. Always great to connect with him. And he's such a craftsman. Uh, just fun seeing him uh, and spending time. I took him down to our local steakhouse uh, for some good Kansas protein. Good times. All right. Take good care, guys. And we'll see you. Uh, storytellers at 8.30 tomorrow morning uh, for coaching, and then um, Ken Hum in the swings for at uh, 8.30, or 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Yeah, 8 o'clock tomorrow. What time do we do that? Brain dead. 8.30, sorry. Take good care and see you tomorrow.